Before I take you back, y'all already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add more to it. It is Thankful Thursdays. We have the activities of our limbs. We ain't in nobody's jail, okay? We are in our right mind. And as I say each and every week, listen, let me tell y'all something. They have a hospital bed available, a jail cell available, and you best believe they got a plot with our name on it. So if you are grateful to be alive and be in the number, let me tell you something. It's thankful Thursdays. And um, if you are going through right now, I'm praying that God gives you the strength, the tenacity and the encouragement to continue moving forward in life. Because I know that it can be challenging and I know that it can be difficult and I know that it can be hard. But if you're tuning in, you're listening to. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I'm talking to you today about life hat. Life hat. Have you ever felt like life just came in and hacked you like a predator? Because I'm just trying to figure out what's happening right now, right? Um, if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, y'all already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about life hack. When you are on a journey to becoming your best self, and getting to that next level, um, none of us anticipated that our lives would be hacked in the way that it has been at this point. Um, almost as if we have been hijacked within our own country, within our own state, within our own county, within our own city limits, within our own confinements. Uh, they've created these barriers and these blockages that um, hinder us from moving forward. This is one of the reasons why I continuously say that we are each other's puzzle pieces to situations that are bigger than ourselves. And see, if we're not careful, one of the things that will happen with us is that we'll become oblivious to what's happening. And then when it hits us like a flood, we are looking crazy because now we're trying to figure out what didn't happen. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm wearing my shirt from my, my brother, uh, Jewel Jones, holla. Um, because one of the things about having a life hack is things happen unexpectedly that you did not anticipate happening. Uh, whether it is the beginning or the ending of a relationship, whether it is... Um, legal issues that you never thought that you would have to come across, whether you got to sue somebody, press charges, whether it's change employment, whether it's um, dealing with certain contracts. And one of the things that I've learned in life is that life will hack you if you let it. And it will also hijack you if you let it. When I went to New York um, a few weeks ago, I talked about, are you the captain of your ship? Meaning your life. Who is delegating and designing and orchestrating your steps? Is it the media? Is it social media? Is it your friends? Is it your environment? Because a lot of times we will end up blaming our life hacks on our surroundings. Now, guess what? There are some things that we could not stop. Uh, you can't stop being black. No matter how much you bleach your skin, how light skin you get, um, you, you won't be able to uh, deny where you come from because we all, majority of us, come from our natural culture and our natural continent, which is Africa. Those are some things that we can't change. We can't change the fact that we breathe oxygen. That's something we can't change. We can't change the fact that we bleed blood and we need blood to circulate through our body. That's law. That doesn't change. Uh, when you plant a seed, something grows. That doesn't change. That's law. But then we have certain circumstances that are life hacks that do change, like a money shortage within our country. Where they do that at? Like, how do you put that out there to the people to misinform them? Because what that does is it causes people to do what? Panic. And when people panic, they do what? They make bad decisions. They move and operate in scarcity because guess what? They think nothing else is going to be there. So they start moving in an unfaithful manner. 
This is why I often look at people who say they believe in God and they go to church and it makes me wonder, OK, if you go, what do you believe? Because I believe in the God that I serve that sits high and looks low and he's going to provide all of my needs according to his riches, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not trying to say you got to go and be halalah, shama, nama, nama. But what I am saying is you're going to have to big up your faith. And what I mean by big it up, you're going to have to supersize it like McDonald's. OK, there were circumstances and situations where I had to supersize my faith. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking to you today all about life hacks. Stand up or give up. And anybody that's connected to me watching Yeah, I Said It ain't giving up, right? No matter how unfortunate, no matter how disconnected, no matter how hard life gets. And believe you me, losing my father to suicide was hard. Losing my mother to a punctured lung from a ventilator was hard sepsis, uh, a disease and an infection of the blood because somebody at the doctors wasn't washing their hands. Losing my brother to incarceration and murder, that was hard. Having to deal with family obstructions and challenges, that's hard. But you know what's harder? Not following your dreams, not pursuing what God has for you, Staying caught up in situations and toxic relationships that serve you no purpose and serve you no good. Being connected to people that don't want to see you win. Now that, that right there alone will cause a life hack. Because oftentimes we are living to please other people. I ain't living to please a soul, child. But God Almighty and myself, I live my life that my family Hopefully we'll be proud, but either way it go, I ain't worried about that either. Because you just get to a space in life in a peaceful mindset that you know what? You're not coming here to disturb or life hack or hack my life with your stuff. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. Before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja because you do. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks. Because there are people that will come into your life and try to hijack what you have going on. They don't come to partake or give or put in. They come to see what I can come and get what I can come and copy, what I can come in and emulate. And then sometimes connections are not always in a timely matter. Sometimes there are things and situations that God will put on pause just to see what type of situation they got going on. See, there were situations and people that um, I allowed to hack my life. See, some of us have some frustrations because we allow some people into our world. We we said yes to situations that we should have said no to. We said OK when we should have been saying, no, I'm straight. We 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 said no to some things that we should have said, you know what? Let me at least give it a try so that way I can say I gave it my all. See, there are some situations that we do the complete polar opposite. And I don't know why that is when we have the opportunity to build bridges and close gaps and create this this um, ultimate puzzle. I love um, crossword puzzles and uh, uh, jigsaw puzzles. And um, one of the things that I did when I was in rehab, I would get up every day. I would have prayer with one of my homegirls, Kelly, and uh, we would have breakfast. And then we would go to the table and uh, finish a 200 300 puzzle. Can you imagine having a box of all of your stuff, your clothes, shoes, pictures, important information. And in this box is your whole life. This is everything. Or maybe you've gotten a storage unit and you've had to put your stuff up in a storage unit. And, and in that storage unit is everything that you own in this box, this puzzle pieces of a box and every day me and 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 my my uh, roommate Kelly um, or or other individuals will come downstairs in the in the um, rec center and we would put those puzzle pieces together and before we knew it that 
we were getting this corner together and we were getting that corner together and we started forming together this picture of the puzzle. And I'm saying all of that to say is that there are some life hacks that are pieces to the puzzle. And then there are some life hacks that we got to take back because we gave that puzzle piece away. See, there were some puzzles that we did and pieces were missing. And the picture became distorted. And it's a challenge and it's a difficulty when you know you see what you see, but there are pieces missing. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hack. We either going to stand up in this season or we're going to give up in this season. And anybody watching, yeah, I said it, we ain't giving up, right? Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter what mandates that they make across this country. Doesn't matter um, what laws that they pass within this country. If we don't pay attention to what's happening in our world right now, we will end up being circus, <laughs> circus animals, hamsters on wheels, trying to figure how did all of this happen and where was I at when it was happening. See, this is one of the challenges that and one of the reasons why we have to pay attention. And I'm not just talking about paying attention to the news. I'm talking about paying attention to you, how you respond to things, how you deal with people, how you deal with stress, how you deal with your children, how you deal with your spouse, how you deal with your finances. See, before I could check anybody about anything or give advice about anything, I had to find tooth comb areas in my life. And every single day when you don't see me working, I'm fine tuning my life. I can't wait for you to fine tune my life for me. I can't. I'm not waiting for a miracle to drop out of the sky to figure out what's going to happen into my life. We got to find tooth comb and ask God, show me areas where I'm lacking. Show me areas where I need to work on me. Show me areas that I need to work on in my finances. Show me areas that I need to work on with my health. Show me areas that I need to work on with my attitude. Show me areas that I need to work on so that I can be better. Because see, some of us, some of us say we want to be better. Some of us say we want to have great relationships and we want to have great great friends and great business partners, but are we being those things? Are you loyal? Do you show love? Or are you two-faced and double-minded and unstable in all your ways? Do you have a hard time communicating? Do you uh, find it frustrating when it causes you to hold yourself accountable? See, there are a lot of things that we got to understand that right now we are in a season where you better get it right because if you don't get it right, you're going to get left behind. And if you don't get it right, you're going to be looking at other people who are moving forward and their train is moving while other people are moving behind. See, I told you all the beginning of the year, as well as last year, where our country was headed financially. Go back and watch my videos. Go check out my YouTube. I said it. I said, if we don't take care of our finances, if we don't go into home ownership, if we don't focus and take that money, that, that money that we were getting and invest it. See, I took my money and I reinvested it in myself. And if you're not taking your money and reinvesting it in yourself, even if it's just small changes, even if it's just small life hacks for yourself. See, this is where we got to pay attention. See, I look at social media different than a lot of people. A lot of people look at social media and they're looking at what other people are doing. Oh, dang, they're doing their thing over here. Or, oh, man, they're getting ice over here. Or, oh, man, they're getting money over here, especially our young men. This is one of the reasons why I made sure that I was my son's number one voice. I didn't let the streets be my son's number one voice. I didn't let the music become my son's number one voice. Because when you start letting other people become your number one voice and not you, guess what? You start following other people's patterns, their journeys. You start following their maps for you and not your map for you. You start con you start consulting with other people who don't have godly wisdom because you see them shining, but you don't know what they're doing. See, a lot of the a lot of these people, 
What you don't know is scamming and scheming and doing all kind of stuff to get to a space in life. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect and, I, and I'm and i just, oh, my goodness. No, not saying that at all because sometimes you got to do some things to get some places where you didn't think that you needed to be. Now, I will say this. You don't make it a lifestyle. You don't make it something consistent. And see, one of the things that I've noticed is that we want to look as if we're living our best lives, but internally, you are in turmoil. You are in a warfare. I don't care how many trips you go on. I don't care how many selfies you take. I don't care how many photo shoots you do. Because when you are dealing with some stuff inside of you, you better deal with that stuff inside of you. Because when the moment where God decides that he wants to bless you, you won't be mentally or spiritually or guess what? emotionally prepared for what's getting ready to come. This is why you got to always stay prayed up and you always got to be mindful of the next move that you make, because I'm going to tell you something. Repentance and asking for forgiveness is not just merely for you, right? And not the other person and all that stuff that they say, but repentance and forgiveness is also for God to give you the grace and mercy and that extension that you need. Because some of you are close to your expiration date and you don't even know it. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Think about it. Every person that we've literally seen pass, guess what? We didn't anticipate for them to leave this earth as soon as they did. I never thought in a million years that I would be burying my mother at 49 years old. 49. I never thought in a million years I would be burying my brother at 29. 29? You don't know the day or the hour. So because you don't know things that are mysterious to you or challenging to you, I'm sure if we all knew when we was going to die, we would move a lot differently. We would deal with people a lot differently. If we knew that tomorrow or the next day or next week or next month or next year or five years from now or 10 years from now, you're going to be, somebody's going to be reading about you opposed to enjoying life with you. This is why you got to be careful how you deal with people. That's why you got to be careful of, of when you get to the top, how you deal with people. That's why you got to be mindful of the real love that you got to share with people. That real loyalty that you got to share. With people. That fake stuff that you dishing out, that cubic zirconia love that y'all dishing out, it, it's going to get played out. It's going to get rusted. It's going to tarnish. It's going to get your neck gang green. See, some people are so used to giving out cubic zirconia love that when they do get real love, and if from a diamond and a person that's rare, they don't know how to deal with it. And guess what? I'm going to tell you something. When you mismanage, when you mismanage who God has blessed you with, when you mismanage a love that God has blessed you with, when you mismanage a building or a business or a blessing or a strategic partnership, when you mismanage those relationships, God is paying attention. This is one of the reasons why I love God the way that I do, because God knows some things that I don't know about the people that I got to deal with. When I'm out dealing with people from other cities and other states and right here within my own city, right here within my own community. See, some people can see what's happening on the outside, but we got to start paying attention to what's happening on the inside. See, there are some people that have a backdoor agenda with a good front face. See, there are a lot of people that got the, they, they got a good game face, but it's an agenda behind that heart. That's why I pray on everything. I pray about every person. I pray about all my businesses because I'm going to tell you something. There are some people who don't have no good intentions for you. When I move, how I move is because my intentions are pure. There's nothing that nobody can take from me because I get everything from the creator, from God. There's no, there's no favor that you can stop because my favor comes from God. And when you know whose you are, where you come from, 
And see, a lot of y'all, because you go to church, you think that you got favor on your life because you get a little tools and fuse here. Those that, That's just you operating in your own will. See, favor and blessings are things that money can't buy. It's when you can go into a situation and it's already packed up, ready to go for you with your name on it. See, when you go in and everybody can't, they can't rock it because your blessing is a one size. It's one size for you. It ain't a one size fit all blessing. This is a one of a kind blessing that is sculptured and, and, and specifically catered toward you. But see, you only get those type of blessings when you operate in purity, when you operate with good intentions. See, there that this is one of the reasons why what's done in the dark comes to the light. This is one of the reasons why my grandma used to say, if they don't catch you in the wash, they gonna get you in the rinse. See, a lot of people think they're getting away with things. A lot of a lot of um a lot of other ethnicities, especially raw chicken. Um, they've plagued our community with white privilege for so long that even black folks are scared to operate in black privilege because we've been led by white leadership and white money for so long. But the white money and the white privilege came off the black backs. So what I don't understand is every week we know where we come from. We know what's supposed to happen for us and to us. But yet we come across situations where we're scared to step up into our next phase in life. We sit back and we allow situations to happen knowing that we're supposed to speak up against it. This is one of the reasons why there are some people that are older than me. I cannot respect you because you should know better. You were supposed to reach one, teach one, look back and reach one. But see, we don't do that. We continue to spread bad habits. You smoking squares. Now your niece and nephews are smoking squares. You smoking weed. Now your little cousins and want to hang out with you and smoke weed. Y'all ain't talking about no business. Y'all ain't talking about how to how to help each other and formulate a plan as a family. But y'all can drink together, party, and turn up. What do you do when they close the market? What you and your family going to do? I talked about this last week. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to you I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. Listen, I'm talking all about life hacks, stand up or give up. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to you I said it. And nobody that's tuning in to my podcast and show is going to give up. Ain't that right? Come on now, speak up. Somebody say something. I ain't giving up. Put that in the chat. Put that at the But I ain't giving up. Even though these life hacks put us back, sickness can put you back because it can put you down. Can't work, can't move, can't operate. When, you, when you're not feeling your best, you can't give your best because your body got to rest. Okay, I'm about to drop some bars. Y'all ain't ready. Yeah, I said it and before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks because when you're talking about allowing the Grand Prix to drive through our city streets, but you lock up our young men for driving and racing in these streets, that's, that's white privilege. When you make it convenient for another race to do what they want to do, that's privilege. How is it that we have so much black leadership, but we ain't got no black privileges unless you know somebody? That, and that's where you that's where favor comes in. And then you also have to be cautious of who you know. Because sometimes who you affiliate yourself with could hinder your favor. See, there are some friendships, relationships that God had to cut ties. Because in order for you to get to the next level, God had to get rid of some dead weight. There are some people that could not, they couldn't go with you. Because A, they secretly either wanted to be you, trying to overly be like you, watching how you move and operate, but ain't supporting you. See, there are a lot of people that watch me, and I'm aware of it, just like there are a lot of people that watch you. You may get 10 likes today, 
but look at your views and you got 300 people that didn't see it. This is one of the reasons why I operate the way that I do, because at the end of the day, there are some people who know that you have a gift and they know that you have a talent and they know that you're working and God is working on your life. That's why I focus on me, God and my kid and my sister and anything else in between that. If I decide that that's important to me, I'll make it a priority because what I've learned is some people will make you an option while you're making them a priority. You'll be trying to jump through hoops and jump over puddles for them and they ain't even going to move off the couch for you. See, I had to learn that sometimes you may never be good enough for certain people. Your brand may never be good enough. You, they going to always find something wrong with you because that's what, that's what a hater will do. That's what people will do. And see, one of the reasons why we got to get to a place of growth within our ethnicity is because affordable housing is our right. Of better paying wages, that's our right. You can't tell somebody they got to pay $800, $900, $1,200 in rent, and then they got a, a job that's paying them $11.50 or $15 for that matter. I was watching Set It Off the other night. And, you know, they was all sitting there, you know, on top of the roof, smoking a joint. And uh, they were looking at the manufacturing plant. Y'all know the scene. And Cleo said, man, when this, when this plant was open, they was making $15 an hour. And then they was making $20 an hour in overtime. And as I was watching Set It Off and listening to my sister, Miss Cleo, talk about $15 an hour, I went immediately to check out the date of Set It Off. Set It Off was made in the 90s. So if a manufacturing plant was offering $15 in the 90s for executives and $20 for executives, why is it fast forward 20? They're almost 30 years later, we still holding on to 11 and 14 and 13. Pay these people what they're supposed to have. Because let me tell you something. And I'm sick of you Negroes saying that black people don't want to work. Don't nobody want to work. That's not the truth. It's not that don't nobody want to work. Don't nobody want to be overworked and underpaid. That's the problem. Don't nobody want to go to work. And be there with lazy workers. Because, see, there are some people that, that will go to work, but they don't go and do no work. I know this because I've been in a management position not once, not twice, not three times, multiple times. Been in leadership positions where I've been a part of a team and people barely pull their own way. They will literally be a part of a project, literally come to work, clock in, and do nothing all day. Why did you come here? And it's, it's the mentality of I can get it easier because we are seeing because of social media. Oh, this person is getting it this way and this person is getting it that way. But what you're not understanding is that years and years and years went into them doing a particular thing or they were consistent. Some of the things that we lack within our community. Working on consistency with small things is a life hack. See, you can't go to the big things until you maintain the little things that God gave you. This is why the Bible says many are called. Everybody gets the call. A lot of people got a call. Maybe your phone was disconnected. Maybe you was preoccupied listening to somebody else's call, chasing somebody else's dream, following behind somebody else. Many are called, but a few are chosen. I'm going to tell you why a few are chosen. Because a few are chosen because they stepped up to the plate and they were ready. If God was to bless you right now with what you've been praying for, would you be ready? See, I had to stop begging for God to fix it and start preparing myself that it was already fixed. I had to prepare my mindset that I was already healed. I had to get in my spirit that I'm already set free, that I'm already healed. So that way, when you come with your foolishness, I'm already, I'm, I'm tight. 
I got armadillo skin because God knew to prepare me for your foolishness. This is why you got to make sure that you stay in tune with the spirit. The more you stay in tune with the spirit, the more you won't worry about the life hacks in your life. Because I'm going to tell you something. There are people that are in position that are maneuvering our country and maneuvering our world. You don't believe me? 1918, 1919, Spanish flu. Killed 40 million people in a year. One year. Killed 40 million people. They threw out HIV AIDS. They had the cure. They gave out the poison and has the cure. And we sit here and we are like sheep slaughtered because they're telling us to do this. And they're saying, if anybody is pressuring you to do something like this, can you imagine when you were younger and your friend said, Pressure you, man, smoke this cigarette, man. Come on, man, or smoke this blood. Drink this, drink that peer pressure, because that's what I feel like. Feel like this is peer pressure. And I feel like it's, it's, it's pushing and pushing and pushing to a point because they're pushing an agenda. When you're wealthy, you don't speak the language of the poor. <laughs> you talking about city trends. They talking about taking over cities. Y'all ain't the same. <laughs> You out here buying Timberlands, they out here buying force. Okay? You over here trying to get gas money to go hang out and turn up. They're buying up gas wells. Y'all aren't the same. This is why we got to pay attention. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks. Stand up and don't give up. Because at the end of the day, if we don't get to a place of a repentance, meaning God, I need you to change me, fix me, forgive me for anything I've done knowingly or unknowingly. Let me get my relationships in order. Because at the end of the day, you would hate for you to be the person that that's out of here next and you ain't got your affairs in order. See, a lot of people think that, um, they're invincible. That stuff won't happen to them. You know, I uh, I tell people all the time, if God ain't allowed it to happen thus far, it ain't going to happen. Because there are certain situations that I know God's favor kept me from being into a situation that I know I put myself in. Life hacks and situations that I know I did myself. And see, when you know you put yourself in certain situations, then you already know when God brings you out of those situations, it ain't nothing but God. Because you didn't, God didn't put you in those situations. And see, if we don't behave and follow the program, we become an outsider. But I'm going to tell you something. That's why the peculiar are the ones that are called the real and the rare, the authenticity that that everybody don't have. This will makes a person like me one of a kind. When you are real and you are rare, everybody can't handle that. Everybody won't be able to cultivate off of that seed because they're going to be either intimidated because they have lack of confidence or they are lacking a particular thing that they see in you. And then sometimes the angel in you will irritate the devil in them. See, there are some people that are okay with doing the bare minimum. They're okay with giving you the bare minimum in a relationship, in a friendship, in a business partnership. I never forget partnering with somebody uh, with a business. And they talked about it was too far. Only for them now to have to drive further. Let me tell you why. Because the hustle wasn't in them. When it's in you, it's in you. When it's on you, it's on you. And there are some people who are going to do everything 
that they need to do and they're going to give it their all. And then there's going to be some people that's going to just try la 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 on the cross. That's why you got to be careful who you link up with. That's why you got to be careful who you call your business partner. Because at the end of the day, there are some people that are okay with getting away with the bare minimum. Unfortunately, my parents weren't slave owners. My, my ancestors weren't slave owners. They were enslaved. I don't have a gas station. I don't have an inheritance uh, from my grandma or my granddad or auntie or uncle. I didn't, my, my parents, they loved me, but they weren't financially responsible enough to leave a, a cushion behind to help the next generation. This is why it's so important for you to take care of your business because you don't know when it's time for you to go. I have had conversations with my son, even at an early age, because these are real conversations that we miss and then our children or our family members turn into alcoholics and drug addicts because they can't deal with grief and they can't deal with disappointment and they can't deal with stuff uh, not being the way that it needs to be because we didn't train our children in the way that they should go. So when they are old, they will not depart from it. Some of y'all don't want to have the tough conversations. You don't want to have the tough conversations with your family. So you brush it under the rug as if it doesn't exist only for it to exacerbate and get bigger. We don't have the conversations with our spouses. And then before we know it, things have blown up and blown over and now you are at each other's throats. You don't talk, you don't communicate, you don't apologize, you don't ask the right questions. You worried about the wrong things. And if we're not careful, our young people will think that they part of BMF and be in the kitchen trying to cook up some coke, not knowing you ain't about this life in the 80s compared to 2021. There's no way. And I'm going to tell you something else. The difference between then and now is that it wasn't a bunch of cameras around. See, a lot of y'all talk too much. You show every step. You showing everything. See, I show what I, I want you to see. What I don't want you to see, you won't see. What I don't want you to share, you won't know about until I'm ready for you to share it. Right now, I'm working on some, some amazing things. And I could drop, drop a bomb on some people real quick or just drop a bomb just because I can. But I'm not going to do it prematurely because I want to make sure everything is tight, everything is right, and everything is where it needs to be, especially from the production team for me. And you got to be mindful. If you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Because I'm going to tell you something. The situations that they put us in causes us all to be the same. Got to wear the mask. Got to be six feet apart. Got, And now we're all looking at each other the same way, cautiously, as if we're strangers, enemies. They've, they've caused us to mess with our senses, our touch, can't touch one another. We're, we're people. We are, we are made to connect. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. That was, that was a command, a, a connection. So when you got people that are billionaires and millionaires trying to control a narrative that God created, it's going to be chaos every time. It's going to be foolery every time. This is one of the reasons why you got to stay girded up. You got to stay mindful. Because I'm going to tell you something. The same person that sold the problem is going to sell you the solution. Just like the same person that's selling you a dream is also going to sell you a nightmare. That's why we got to make sure that we are teaching our children about disappointment. How to handle situations when you're not liked. When you're being talked about. How to deal with bullying, how to deal with transitions and grief in life. Because I'm going to tell you something. When my son lost his grandfather, his pop pop, um, I saw a change in my son. And I, I had to immediately swoop in. And if you're listening, you're listening to Yah said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks. When my son's grandfather passed away, um, he was his father. He called him every day, all day. 
Make sure his homework got done. Ask him questions about his day. Ask him questions about his friends. Taught him how to cook his seafood and showed him how to prepare things. And Although he was in a wheelchair and in wheelchair bound, he wasn't always wheelchair bound, but it was the fact that even though he was in a situation, he made provisions to build that relationship with his grandson. And when my son lost his grandfather, it changed him. See, there are some life hacks and some situations that will change you. And depending on what side of the scope of your mind you're on will also depend on how you deal with life situations. Because this is not going to be the last situation that we're dealing with. Delta variants. It went from Corona to COVID. To Delta, next thing you know, it's going to be something new. Now we got, they got commercials for other stuff. It's like they just throwing everything on the wall and seeing what sticks. And if we're not careful, we're going to be sitting there biting our nails instead of planning, preparing, paying attention, researching, purchasing stuff we need versus purchasing stuff we want. That's why if you're in the field of um, you're in the field of things that are uh, wants and not needs, you might want to find you something else to do. Because I'm gonna tell you something: when people's money gets scarce, ain't nobody trying to go get their hair done, sis. I'm sorry, but nobody's gonna be thinking about I gotta go get my hair done if I gotta go pay my DTE bill. This is one of the reasons why we have to be very mindful about our career paths. You got to be mindful of the next level of your destination. See, a lot of us, we got to a point of success and we got there and we got and we say, oh, we good. This is one of the reasons why our generations are behind, because the Negroes before us, they got their college degree. They got their name tag on their desk. They got the chance to get a parking lot, a parking space in the parking lot with their little name on it. They, the enemy gave them just enough to feel like they were important. And you know what they did? They left the, the next generation to figure it out. So then here comes the baby boomers who have picked up the money and they've, they've gotten the money off the enslavement and, and off medicine and off incarceration, mass incarceration. And they've gotten the money off of making us look stupid and, and killing one another. And then here comes the 90s generation where now we got gangs and bang, bang, shoot them up. And we got crack and we got all of these different things that are plaguing our community and we are entertaining it. And here we are fast forward. And not only do we have all the things that we had to deal with in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, and now it's all mixed up in a big old jumbo pot. And we still got black leaders that's not being leaders. But you want these young people to follow behind your footsteps. How? What are we showing them? If you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all, yeah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. This is one of the reasons why, if you're tuning in, I'm talking all about life hacks. This is one of the reasons why I had to make sure that when I saw my son becoming at risk, because before anybody launches out to do anything, guess where it starts? Here. That idea, whether good, bad, or indifferent, didn't come from nowhere started here and as it started here it started manifesting and it started boiling and it started mixing and before you know it now you've added parts in it and before you know it now you're moving with those parts you're dealing with those parts and now that idea that was once a thought an entertaining of a thought now it's an action this is why before anybody decides that they're going to cheat in their marriage they've already cheated in their mind they already left their spouse. They did not be, before before somebody decides that they want to do something good, bad, or indifferent. It was already up here. This is why you got to mind your thoughts. That's why you got to mind what's in your spirit. That's why you got to mind who you connect with, who you link with. Being equally yoked is not just about being 
uh, in marriage, it's about being equally yoked to build. There's a reason why God wants people to be equally yoked because there's a puzzle. There's a bigger picture to the puzzle. And if you are not paying attention, you're going to be missing pieces to a puzzle that's incomplete. Have you ever felt? That's why people who are successful and they have all the money in the world, but what do they say? They felt like they were missing something. And see, when you don't understand people, you'll get your feelings hurt every time. See, I had to learn uh, that some people don't even have respect for themselves. You know why? Because they'll let people treat them any kind of way only to be in the circle. They'll be used, abused, misused. Only to say they part of a crew. Or only to say they got a man or they got a woman. See, we, we've gotten to a place where we expect respect, but we don't even give respect to ourselves. How can you expect something from me that you're not giving to yourself? See, I love me. So anybody that's around me, they going to love me too, or you don't need to be around me. Why would I be around somebody that don't like me, don't love me, don't want to be around me? Why would I put myself in an uncomfortable position? See, some of us like drama, so we keep ourselves in uncomfortable position. Let me tell you something. You're not going to put me in nothing I don't want to be in. Yeah, I said it. And before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. Make sure you follow me on social media. Follow me on all my social media platforms. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, You Know Jaja, because you do. Listen, check out my show each and every Friday, Uncommon Conversations. You can check it out on my website at www.jajachubbard.com. Listen, or you can go to my YouTube channel, or you can check me out on WHPR channel 15.2, channel 90. And listen, if you are looking to schedule your fall ceremony, listen, I don't know. Uh, I guess the Brett and Judy, they didn't make February 22nd, 2022, a very popular wedding year. And that date is book, booking up fast. So if you're looking to get married within these next 90 days, if you're looking to get married um, for the month of February, I'm booking fast. So make sure that you, um, if you're going to be getting engaged over the holiday, make sure that you schedule your appointment with United Vows. Um, because listen, being connected and building with someone is a beautiful thing. We got to stop being so reckless within our community and get somewhere, sit down and build. Because I'm going to tell you something about these other cultures. They marry, they stable. They don't have a bunch of kids here, bunch of kids there, baby daddy's here, baby mama's there. This life over here, this life over there, they create stability. And this is one of the things that our communities are missing. We from pillow to post, they toss us to and fro. And then when somebody comes in that is stable, we don't know how to handle it because we've been through so much trauma, so much drama that, oh, wow, this person ain't coming to take from me. This person is actually coming to be with me because we're so used to saying, give me, give me, give me, this is all mine. Because there's so much scarcity that they've caused us to have because of economic disadvantages within our community because we don't have enough. This is why our children go to school hungry, because we don't have enough. And it ain't because we can't get more. It's because we put our money and our attention into the wrong things. We put our focus into the wrong areas. And see, sometimes people will confuse your aggressiveness your assertiveness with aggressiveness because you're focused on your focus and everybody ain't focused on their focus. So you being direct, you being headstrong, you being in a certain direction, you being having a focus point can be a turnoff to other people because you'll be looked at as a workaholic or you just doing too much or, or they'll say things like you need to slow down. You need to take a break. No, I don't. I need to gas, put the foot to the gas. My son in college, I'm all gas, no brakes, because I was already taking a break. 
I was tired, y'all. And although um, I'm in a, a, a transition, I've never been in this, this space in my entire life. And uh, it's scary, but it feels good because I know that I accomplished the task that God gave me. God gave me my son. He was a gift. And my son is anointed because he wasn't supposed to be here. If you have drank orange juice and bleach, stuck a wire hanger up your vagina and spent it around, pushed yourself down the stairs, went to the abortion clinic to get an abortion only to not have enough because the other person didn't bring their other half, Having someone try to step on your stomach, go through all of these different changes and not tell me that person wasn't supposed to be here. That boy is blessed. For him to come out of this, come into this world normal, all of his limbs, even some little extra little digits that he got. His grandfather told him that was good luck for his family from Florida. His grandma Prince. And you know what's so special about my son? That if his grandfather hadn't changed his last name, my son's name would be Tayshawn Prince. So can you imagine the fact that I was already speaking royalty? I was already speaking life into a situation that I thought was dead. This is why you got to pay attention to your mindset and you got to pay attention to your words. Because I'm going to tell you something. I can't settle for less. I'm expecting more. I'm expecting God to do great things in my life. I'm expecting God to do miracles. I'm expecting God to do some things for me and my family. I'm expecting God to do some things for my son. I'm expecting God to do some things for you, especially the people that are supporting me. I'm expecting God to hear your prayers because you are hearing my prayers and supporting what I'm doing. This is one of the reasons why I'm working so hard, because I'm going to tell you something. When a person gets put in a position to win, they also put other people in the position to win as well. This is why I tell, told you earlier about the bigger picture, the bigger puzzle. There are pieces that you need. That's why you can't be out here talking about, I don't need you. I don't need nobody. I got me, myself, and I. Okay, you, yourself, and I ain't going to be able to do you, yourself, or nothing. Because there is a need for a connection. There's a part that you play in my life, and there's a part that I play in your life. And see, depending on your pride, your ego, your jealousy, your envy, You'll mess up on a, on a piece of your puzzle that you need because you in your own way. See, I had to learn to get out of my own way. And the minute that I got out of my own way was the minute that things started happening for me. This is one of the reasons why you got to do a heart check. This is one of the reasons why you can't get out there and be acting like you, you love, you showing love, but then you really low key hating and you really low key don't see this is, and see, this is one of the things that I love about God. God know the conversations that people are having about you when you ain't around. See, I can't focus on what nobody's saying about me. Just like you can't focus about what nobody's saying about you. But I'm going to tell you this. You better understand and have a, ser a, a sense of discernment because God will show you the people who ain't for you. You just got to ask, God, where these people come from? Who sent them? What's their intentions? Because I'm going to tell you something. I pick up on people's spirits immediately. I already look at them and, and I know. That's why I, I'm very mindful of who I have my spirit around. Because everybody don't have the same purity and intentions that you and I do. There are some people who do what they do to show off or to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. It ain't to help nobody. It's to say, look at what I did. That's why you got to be mindful of what's in that heart, the type of heart that a person has. Because they can look good on the outside, 
but that heart is real rotten. And one of the things that I've learned is that we can sing together, but we can't talk together. And somebody going to have to do the talking and somebody going to have to do some listening. And not listening to respond. That's what my ex-husband taught me. He used to be like, you just listening to respond. You ain't even listening to comprehend what I'm saying. And I used to be like, I am listening. I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was listening to respond. Because I was ready for a rebuttal. I was ready to defend myself. I was ready to defend the situation, but I wasn't listening to comprehend what was being said to me. And see, some of you, you hear somebody to say, you hurt me. I didn't like how you did this to me. I didn't like how you made me feel. You don't get to say, well, this is why I did it. And da 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 ka 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 and woo 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 woo. Instead of taking in the mindset of, okay, let me be an active listener. You're saying that this has hindered our relationship. What can we do to make it better? That's when you have matured. That's when you've grown to the next level. Some people are grown in age, but they're not grown in maturity. They're not grown in emotions. They're not grown in their spirit. They kids. 26, 24, 30, 40, 50, 70, 60 kids. 40 some a child, petty, still having childish behavior, have not grown up. And, and the crazy part about it is, is that I look at people that I once admired and I thank God there was a separation. And people know when you're, when you're headed, when you're headed somewhere, they may not know exactly where you're going with it, but they know you're going somewhere. And so God will allow certain ties to be cut, certain relationships to be mended so that you can be used for his glory. But that's only if you decide that you want to be used. See, I talk to God every day about not only his will being done, but mine as well. I don't want to just be doing something that I don't feel like is my purpose and my passion. But see, this is why I love God, because his will will always match yours if your intentions are pure. And at the end of the day, when your intentions are pure, you're going to have something worthy to say. This is why you can't listen to fools. Everybody can't speak into my life. Everybody ain't laying hands on me. Everybody ain't a prophet or a prophetess. And everybody damn sure ain't heard a word from the Lord. He told you that? Because if he told you, he going to tell me too. That's why you got to be mindful of people with itching ears. They always want to know what's going on, who said what, what's going on. I, ain't, I don't care. What did God say? Who sent you? How is this going to help? Because right now we have black leaders that are suffering while there are other black leaders just floating, living a best life, doing the bare minimum. We got black organizations like the NAACP that barely do anything for the black community other than sit on their behinds and collect awards all day. Yeah, I said it and before I take it back, I'm gonna add more to it because when do we get to the point where we're actually representing our people? When do we get to the point where we're actually supporting our people? Not who we want to support, not who makes us feel the most comfortable. Because I'm going to tell you something. The minute that you support people over here, it will affect the group over here. The minute that we put money over here, that money will flow over here. The minute that we push the position over here, that'll be the moment that we have a situation here. And see, this is why we have to be mindful of where we place our time and our money. You gonna keep taking your money across eight miles? You gonna keep spending your money with the white folks? As much as y'all go in the beauty supply store, you and your friends ain't thought about opening up a beauty supply store? Then you get, it's, it becomes too hard. You don't wanna ask no questions. You don't wanna get no help. We gotta get to a place where we are building what we need. Why don't we have what we need? This is why 
Black-owned grocery stores are imperative because if they shut down the Chaldean grocery stores, then what? This is why owning Black-owned gas stations is necessary because if they decide that they want to shut down the gas stations and only serve their family, what you going to do? Can't do nothing. You going to break in? You know they're going to take your Black behind to jail. That's one thing for sure that's guaranteed for us. Jail, imprisonment, death. We are pretty much becoming successful by the hairs of our chinny chin chin because we are supporting the masses. The culture here in Detroit definitely has to change. It's changing, but it's changing in a pace where it's selective, like selective hearing. But if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks. Because one of the things that I... I want you to understand is that they are trying to put us in a position where we are conditioned to be sheep, to operate as robots, to be tamed and trained, modern day slavery. And if we're not careful, we will sit back and allow ourselves to get back chained up. It starts mentally, emotionally, then physically. You don't think that what they did to the Haitians, they can't come and do to you? You don't think that what they did to Breonna Taylor can't happen to you? You don't think that what happened to Jelani Day or Daniel Roberts can't happen to your kid? This is why we got to be paying attention to what's happening in our communities, not just what's happening on the media, but actually preparing to help one another build. That's why you start with the free stuff first. This is why I look at some of you Negroes and say, you can't share, like, comment, that's free. I can't even expect you to buy nothing from me because you can't even do the bare minimum. The bare minimum of like, share, comment. It's too hard. It's too difficult. They may become more successful than me. That's that, that's that nigga mentality that we got to get out of. That's that white stuff, that raw chicken that they've, they poisoned our community with. I don't want to see her win. I don't want her to get ahead of me. I'm going to get ahead of you, boo. You might get ahead of me. Either way it go, we ahead of where we were at. This is why I'm very mindful of who I link up with. Because if you're worried about Somebody getting ahead of you, you're already behind. You worried about somebody being more successful than you? You don't believe and trust God. You envious about somebody's success? You don't have faith. Because I know and I believe the God that did it for Oprah, Wendy, Arsenio, Ricky Lake, Sally Jesse Raphael, Montel Williams, if he did it for them, he going to do it for me. If he did it for the Tyra Banks show, if he did it for uh, Geraldo, he'll do it for me. If he did it for uh, the Raphael show, he'll do it for me. God ain't short of his promises or his blessings. That's why I'm not worried about no shortage. Because God don't run out. People do. But God don't. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all setting it before we take it back, we're going to add more to it. Listen, I am challenging you to live in hope, not in fear. I'm challenging you to dare to follow that dream, not to live in doubt. Um, I'm getting ready to work on some programs for the next 90 days, and I really want you guys to be a part of it. Listen, I've had some fires that had to be lit underneath me. But that's because there are people who value what I do and they value where I'm going. Not because they want to just truck along, but because they know that we are attached. This is a puzzle. They know what the bigger picture looks like. And when you know what the bigger picture looks like, you take you out of the way and say, what we got to do? I got the shovel. You grab the rake. I got the bricks. You grab the cement. I, I can't build nothing, but I can bring the water to make sure y'all stay hydrated. Everybody plays a position. 
But when you don't play your position, we don't get there fast enough. This is why we're 400 years behind, because y'all ain't playing y'all part. Y'all watching Black Mafia family, but what you ain't paying attention to is everybody played their part. You ain't playing your role because you're too jealous of the next person. You hating, and the hate in your heart is harboring you not to repost. Not to share, like, or comment. That is ludicrous to me. Because what that tells me is that your mindset is small. And that you fear growth. And that you also fear somebody growing faster than you. But I'm going to tell you something about a life hack. We're going to keep having challenges, obstructions, changes within this country. We are the divided snakes of America. And we have leadership that look like you and me. All kin folk ain't skin folk and everybody ain't for the betterment of the people. Some people mindset is profits over the people instead of people over the profits. But see, I'm going to tell you something. From the president to the pulpit. God watching it all. And I'm going to tell you something. God God will destroy everything around that person except for that person. So you might want to be mindful of how you move and operate in this season. Because what you think you're doing behind closed doors or if you're not genuinely operating with a pure clean heart god will know and so will the people this is why you got to pay attention to your tests and the challenges that come before your life because there's a lesson in what you're learning and it's also showing you where there's a need when my mom was sick not only could i just focus on her but i also would look at other people laying in the hospital beds. Now we look at other people in the rehabs, in the senior homes, dealing with obstructions and physical ailments. And all I saw was, these are problems that need solutions. And one of the reasons why our people are behind is because you're not working on the solutions to the problems in our community. You trying to be like them instead of being called who you were called to be. You can't be like Jaja, because Jaja got to be like Jaja. Jaja still learning to be Jaja. So you can't be me if I'm still learning to be me. You going to be on the last season of Jaja while Jaja's on the new season of Jaja. This is why you got to be mindful and ask God what you're called to do. Or you're going to be following behind somebody else's journey and following behind somebody else's footsteps that weren't meant to be yours. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah said it, and before I take it back, I'm gonna add more to it. I'm talking all about life hacks because life has a way of hacking you and trying to destroy everything that you're building, brainwash us, and cause us to have obstructions in our lives. And if we're not careful, and if we're not paying attention to what's happening, we will fall for the okie doke like we've continued to do generation after generation after generation. And the buck stops here with me. I don't know about you. I don't know what you planning on doing with you and your family, but I know what I plan on doing with me and mine. I don't know what you plan on doing with your business, but I know what I plan on doing with me and mine. So if I were you, I would be focusing on getting a plan together, researching getting your paperwork in order. I would buy unnecessary stuff that I don't need. I would stack on stuff that I do need. And if you do decide that you want to splurge and you want to live and treat yourself, do so. If that's what God put on your heart to do, we weren't here to just be. God wants us to live an abundant life, a stress-free life. But the only way that we can do that is if we work together, because we work together as a team. Together, everyone achieves more, not some. So listen, I love y'all. Have an amazing weekend. Listen, if you see me out here in these streets, I will be doing the red carpet 
for Mina Monroe for her new movie, Three Keys. This is her first uh, director debut. And um, I'm, I'm super excited to uh, be on the red carpet uh, for the movie premiere. I hope you guys enjoy 100 Women in Heels on last week. Um, this week, I'll be doing some more interviews and just making some stuff happen because God is good and, you know, he's just doing some great things and I'm appreciative to it. Listen, I love y'all. Have an amazing weekend. Make sure that you all are washing your hands, eating your vitamins. Listen, make sure y'all get out here and get in the sun, get some fresh air. Listen, don't get cooped up and all depressed and, and, and wallowing in your situation. Listen, Get the Bible says, get a plan, write the vision and make it plain, write the vision, make it plain and work towards it every single day, whether it's a little bit or a lot of bit. either way, work on it. Holla. It's your girl, Jaja. Yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know y'all heard me the first time. Peace.